Hey founders, today I want to talk about a bit of a sticky topic, founder stock vesting. This sets a lot of founders off because you're worried. Someone's telling you that you no longer have all the stock that's been given to you and that maybe if you leave or are thrown out, they're going to take some of it back. But I want to walk through how this works, how this can actually be beneficial in a multi co-founder environment. And I want to do it through a made up example. We're going to look at a defense contractor formed by Tony Stark, Bruce Banner, Thor and Loki and see how things turn out for them. Welcome to Feel the Boot, the science of startups. I'm your host, Lance Cottrell, and I'm here to help you navigate the nearly vertical learning curve you will encounter as you launch your startup. I know what it's like, I've been there myself, and I have helped countless other founders along their journey. Let's look at how some of the dynamics in founder stock vesting works out through the lens of this hypothetical company. We're going to assume that initially it was founded by Iron Man and the Hulk. Uh, but after a couple of years as they grow, they decide to bring in two more co-founders. They reach out to their good friend Thor and Thor says, you know, I'd love to join you, but I really want to bring my younger brother along. And so they also invite Loki to join the founding team. So now there are four co-founders, Iron Man, the Hulk, Thor and Loki. Now that they're bringing in a bunch of co-founders, Tony Stark decides it might be a good time to vest all of the co-founders stock. And they divide up the company with Tony getting 40% because he's been there the longest and he's also contributed significant cash. Uh, Bruce Banner, the Hulk and Thor both taking 25% because they're bringing a great deal of value to the company and Loki taking 10% because he's somewhat the newcomer at this point. When setting up this vesting, he doesn't vest everyone equally because not everyone's been there the same amount of time. So Tony Stark's been there the longest. He's only going to invest 50% of his shares and the rest of his shares he just already has completely. He says, for Bruce, you've been here almost as long as I have. You're going to rest, vest 75% of your shares. And because Thor and Loki just came on board, they're both going to be vesting 100% of their shares. This kind of vesting setup is fairly standard and would probably be acceptable to most investors. Although Tony Stark's vesting schedule might raise some eyebrows because in many cases, in A rounds at least, the investors don't like to see any of the co-founders with more than 40% of their stock already vested. And Tony's starting day one with 50% vested, so that could be throwing a red flag. Now, they've set up the vesting schedule again in the most standard way, which is a four year vest with a one year cliff, which means none of the stock that's going to be vested vests until the end of one year, at which point a quarter of it vests. And from then on, uh, it vests monthly for the remaining 36 months. At the end of four years, you own all the stock free and clear. Acme Vengeance has four co-founders and so it's very common for the co-founders to want to set up a vesting schedule for that kind of business. But vesting also comes up in solar founder scenarios, often pushed by an investor. You could imagine that perhaps Bruce Banner had a previous company and when his investors came in, they insisted that he vest his stock knowing that from time to time he would hulk out and that could cause problems for the business. Before we move on to looking at exactly how this plays out for Acme Vengeance and these four co-founders, I need to take care of a little bit of business. First, big exciting announcement, Feel the Boot now has merch. So if you go to feeltheboot.com and slash merch, the link at the top of the page, uh, you can get coffee mugs, water bottles, t-shirts, denim jackets, all sorts of things with the Feel the Boot logo on it. And of course, it does help support the channel. If you're enjoying this content, I'd really appreciate it if you would give this episode a like. And if you've enjoyed multiple episodes, please think about subscribing and ringing that bell. It does make a huge difference and helps us get in front of more founders, which is the whole point, helping people like you. Finally, if you'd like to get one-on-one -on -one help from me, sign up for our mailing list, Boot Prints. You do that again at feeltheboot.com. Click the join link. I'll put that down in the description. And in each issue, I include a link to my Calendly so you can sign up to get one-on-one -on -one mentoring from me. I love talking to founders like you and it is in fact where many of the ideas for these episodes come from. 
After Thor and Loki join the company, it doesn't take long for Loki to get up to his usual tricks and start playing pranks on everyone in the company and being generally disruptive. About six months later, this finally causes Bruce to lose it. He hulks out and goes crazy on Loki. I am a god, you dull creature, and I will not be bullied by that. And this is obviously a problem. The board really can't allow co-founders to be bashing each other around. And so he's asked to leave. But the board considers this to be a good lever situation because Bruce really can't control this. This is a medical condition. So he's asked to leave, but the company will uh, buy back his shares that are unvested. Now they're gonna pay the par value. So in this case, it's 0.00001 dollars per share, so not a lot for that, but Bruce does have the 25% that was already vested before. Now, the board could have chosen not to exercise that buyback and allowed him to keep all the shares, but they really don't want a huge owner sitting outside of the company, so they do choose to bring it back in. They also could have had the option to pay fair market value for those shares rather than the par value of the stock. However, that is extraordinarily rare, requires a lot of cash on hand, and so, not surprisingly, the company isn't gonna do that. After a little bit more than a year, Loki's nefarious activities finally come back to bite him. Tony Stark discovers that he's been selling some of Acme Vengeance's new inventions to other companies and keeping the cash. and also has been sowing dissent within the business, lots of politics and backstabbing. You've literally stabbed people in the back like 50 times. I'd never do it again. And he clearly has to go. And because he's been violating his intellectual property agreements, he is a bad lever. And so he's fired and they will immediately buy back his shares. But fortunately, they've also put in a provision that allows them to buy back his vested shares so that they don't want him to have any ownership in the company. And this is one of those variables you see in vesting agreements, but it can often be useful to have the right to buy back all of a person's vested shares, typically at fair market value. Now, some agreements will even put in special categories for good lever versus bad lever behaviors. This is more common in Europe, where potentially the company would buy back all the stock at the par value, basically wiping out the person if they're a bad lever. That's much less common in the United States because it's often difficult to determine what is a legitimate good lever versus bad lever situation, and it's more likely to end up in litigation in the US, since everything tends to, and probably won't come up that often. So in the US, typically everyone's treated the same, but it is up to the board to decide if they want to exercise the buyback option, and if they have the option to, whether they want to buy back even the vested stock, again, typically at fair market value. Now, we're down to just two remaining co-founders, Tony Stark and Thor, and one outside former co-founder with some stock, the Hulk. And at this point, the company is doing very well and Red Skull Enterprises comes along and wants to acquire them. Uh, so they're happy with that, the valuation looks good, and they're moving forward with that deal. And in this case, the uh, stock vesting agreement said that it was a single trigger vest, uh, acceleration of vesting, which means that in an acquisition, everyone's unvested shares immediately vest completely. But Red Skull Enterprises wants these people to stay on and continue working for them for at least a few more years. So part of the negotiation that they push for is to change the single trigger acceleration to double trigger in acceleration, which means that your shares don't accelerate until after the acquisition when you are then fired or let go. And so if you're fired within that vesting period, then all of your shares vest. If you leave voluntarily, they don't vest, right? It only happens on that second layer of acceleration if you're fired. And so they're gonna put that in place. And because Tony and uh, Thor are pretty excited about this acquisition, they might be willing to renegotiate this and add in the double trigger acceleration provision in place of the existing single trigger.
With this double trigger provision, the unvested stock continues to vest on the same original schedule. However, now that they've been acquired, they're vesting Red Skull Enterprises stock as opposed to Acme Vengeance. As you can see, in this case, this was very beneficial to the founders because when they had to let Loki go, they were able to cut him off cleanly and have him not take any ownership away. They wanted that relationship to be done and the founder vesting provisions allowed them to do that. At the same time, they had to let Bruce Banner go because of his Hulk problems, but they didn't necessarily want to cut him off completely. At the same time, they didn't want to give him his full share as an original co-founder because he didn't deliver all the value. He left very early in the whole process. So with the vesting, he was able to take some of the shares with him. It compensated him for the work that he'd done, which was fair, but prevented him from taking too large a chunk when he left. So especially in multi-co-founder scenarios, the vesting helps handle situations where things don't necessarily go well. And unfortunately, problems among co-founders and co-founders leaving early is a shockingly common scenario. If you go down the path of getting venture capital, you will almost certainly be asked to vest your shares at some point in that process. And understanding how founder share vesting works can be critical to avoiding getting screwed if they push really unfavorable terms on you. Thanks for watching this episode. I hope you found it useful and interesting, and if so, please like, subscribe, ring that bell. Since you've just watched an episode on founder share vesting, you might also be interested in looking at stock options, which share a very similar vesting schedule. I have two episodes that might be particularly interested. One is focused on stock options from the employee perspective to help you explain how options work to the people you're hiring so they value them and understand what it is you're giving them. And the other is about stock options from the founder, from the entrepreneur's perspective. And it talks about how you can leverage the stock options to incentivize your employees and some of the ways those dynamics can impact the company. So, till next time, ciao.